One of my gripes with the WRX that some of you may share, and this isn't just the VB, it's the previous gen as well, but it is the shifter. It's sloppy and the throws are long and they just don't feel as satisfying as some other cars that I've driven. But the great thing about owning a car like this is that you're able to modify it and transform it into exactly what you want. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how to install a shift knob, short throw shifter, and shifter stop that's gonna clean everything up and make our shifts buttery smooth. This is the Billetwork short throw shifter, arguably the best aftermarket option available. This is gonna shorten your throws up to 35%, which is 20% more than the competition. And on top of that, they have a ton of different color options for you to choose from when it comes to your reverse lockout, shifter stop, and shift knob. I'm plain and simple, so I just went with a matte black, but you could choose from a red, teal, gloss black, or their cosmic space colors, and much more. And they even offer a custom engraving service for your shift knob, if you'd like. Now, since I went with just a plain old matte black for the reverse lockout, I figured I'd change things up for the shift knob. This is their Fusion shift knob that has a very nice, hefty weight to it. I decided to go with the gloss white to match the white of the WRX. We've got a leather outer that feels great in your hand and we have the gate pattern engraved on top. This should pop nicely once we get everything installed in the car. We are gonna be working underneath the car, so get it up in the air using your preferred method. I'm using my quick jacks, but you can certainly do this on traditional jack stands as well. To start off, we're gonna remove this heat shield here that's above the resonator. It's held in with six 12 millimeter bolts all around. With those bolts removed, all I'm gonna do is grab the heat shield and just move it back all the way I can until it kind of gets stuck right here. And that's gonna give us enough access to the bolts on the shifter assembly. There's four 10 millimeter nuts holding the shifter plate cover in place. Remove those nuts and we can remove the plate. On the passenger side, you're gonna see the side shifter cable. What we're gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver, wedge it into this gap here, and pry the cable off of the linkage. Just like that. The main shifter cable can be accessed on the driver's side of the drive shaft. What we're gonna to wanna to do is spread apart the metal retaining clip right here on this white plastic portion while pulling down and that's gonna release it from the shifter. You do wanna be careful here if you don't spread the clip far enough apart while you're pulling down, you may pop off this white cap on the shifter. So just be aware of that and look for that when you have it released. And now there's just gonna be four nuts left that we'll need to remove. So here are the four nuts that are left. There's one right there and one over here. And then if we go to the other side, there's gonna be one right there and one up there. All right, now we can go inside the car. Hop it inside the car, our shifter is now even more sloppy. <laughs> we are going to tear apart the center console a little bit. We'll start by unscrewing the shift knob here. We're gonna remove the shifter trim along with the shift boot and the bottom tray of the cubby hole here. It's all one piece. All you have to do is reach in here and find the edge of the shifter trim with your fingers and pull straight up and that should pop it out of place. And we'll just slide it off of the shifter like so. To remove the cup holder section of our center console, we're gonna start with the e-brake boot. Make sure your e-brake is engaged and we're gonna pull straight up on the boot to pop it off and slide it off the handle. Set that aside. We're gonna open up the armrest and we should be able to just pop this section up and out. And there we go. We're gonna remove these two Phillips head screws that are holding the two side panels of the center console to the shifter assembly. 
On both sides of the shifter assembly, you'll see harnesses clipped into place. There's one right there and one right there. So take some needle nose pliers and unclip those harnesses. There are four 12 millimeter bolts left holding the shifter assembly in place. Two up top here and two on the bottom. For those bolts removed, what I'm gonna do is disconnect the two side pieces of the center console right here. There's two tabs that you can depress or I'm just gonna kinda force it out. And then we can grab the shifter, pull it up and carefully remove it from the car. Now that this is out of the car, we're essentially gonna be disassembling the whole thing so we can remove the stock shift lever and replace it with the billet work shifter. So keep track of all the nuts and bolts that we're taking off so you know exactly where they go when we go to put things back together. We're gonna to start by removing these two metal brackets that are held in with some Phillips head screws. That gives us access to remove the 12 millimeter bolt holding the neutral lock plunger in place. We're gonna flip this around and you're gonna be looking for this 10 millimeter nut on this side and you'll need a 17 millimeter wrench on the other side to hold the bolt in place while we remove this nut. We'll flip it back around. We can remove this bolt that holds the side shift assembly in place. And then we can remove the neutral lock plunger and the side shift assembly off. Should come off in two pieces. There we go. We'll flip it around yet again and there's gonna be two seven millimeter nuts that are holding the sub-assembly for the shifter in place. So remove these nuts and then we'll pull the bolts out through the other side. These are fairly small, so I don't wanna lose them. So I'm gonna put them back on the bolt. Now you should be able to pull the sub-assembly out of the plastic housing. There's two more 10 millimeter nuts on the bottom of this assembly that we're gonna remove. Now we can slide this cover off and we can pop out this white portion with the O-ring as well. And we need to remove this O-ring And you're gonna see that there's a roll pin here that we need to punch out before we can remove the reverse lockout. All right, now we can slide out reverse lockout as well as the shift lever from the subassembly. Now we can disassemble our new billet work short throw shifter to get it ready for installation. There's gonna be two screws on either side of the reverse lockout that we'll need to remove with a 3 seconds Allen key. Then we can pull off the top portion of the reverse lockout. And then with a 7 64ths Allen key, we'll remove this bolt right here that's holding in the lower portion. Now there is a spring in here that's going to want to push this portion down. So I've just got it held up so I can remove this without any tension on it. And then after it's removed, I can slowly release this down. On the top of the spring, there's gonna be a C-clip holding it in place. So I've got some C-clip pliers here to remove that. We'll slide that off and that's gonna allow us to slide this washer, spring, and the lower portion of the reverse lockout off of the lever. 
What we need to do now is grease the three ball joints as well as the shaft so everything slides and rotates smoothly and then we can put everything back together and install it into the assembly. Now you don't want to go too crazy here, you just need a little bit. I probably already started with too much, but we'll wipe off the excess. For reassembly, you're gonna to wanna to pop off the white cap that was on the bottom ball joint of the OEM shifter and transfer it over to the new one. There we go. With everything greased, now it's just a matter of putting it all back together. So we're gonna slide the new shift lever into the subassembly. Reinstall this white plastic portion. making sure the O-ring stays in place. One thing you wanna pay attention to before you put the cover back on is this nut right here. It tends to fall out when you're disassembling things. It's gonna slide into this opening right here for this hole. So make sure that this is in there before you put the cover on. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to take it off to put the nut back on. So now that we've got that back in there, we can reinstall the cover with the two 10 millimeter nuts. We're gonna reinstall the reverse lockout. So we'll slide that on here. Make sure this lobe is pointed in the same direction as this ball joint. We'll slide it all the way down. The spring goes on next. And then the plastic washer. And then we need to reinstall the C-clip that we removed. So carefully slide that back on. And we wanna get it perfectly into this groove that's cut out on the shaft so it locks into position. And now I'm gonna flip this on this side. I'm gonna take two of my fingers, pull up on that reverse lockout and brace my hand on top of the shift lever and reinstall the bolt. And now the top portion of the reverse lockout can slide on and we'll reinstall the two screws here. We can slide the subassembly back into the shifter housing and we'll reinstall the two long bolts that go across the top. Flip this around and reinstall the side shift assembly. Reinstall the 12 millimeter bolt for the neutral lock plunger. We'll flip this around once again to install the nut on the back side. Don't forget to reinstall the two brackets that we took off at the beginning. We're gonna give the reverse lockout a quick wipe down because I'm pretty sure you're gonna have some grease on there. But now, this thing is ready to be reinstalled in the car. If you guys have made it this far, I'm gonna assume that you know what you're doing, hopefully, and that you can reinstall your shifter assembly without my guidance. I'm gonna do that real quick and I wanna show you a comparison between the stock shifter and our new billet work shifter. And then I can show you how to install the shifter stop and a new shift knob. And then finally, we can go test this thing out.
I've got everything reinstalled and put back together. Obviously, you wanna check to make sure you can get to each gear. We'll check reverse. That's all good. I did take some photos with a GoPro that's been set up in the exact same location this whole time of the stock shifter and the new billet work shifter in third and fourth gear to give you guys a visual of the difference. Like I said, the billet work shifter is going to shorten the throws up to 35% and I can already see the difference, but I do notice there's still some slop in first and second gear. So let's go ahead and install the shifter stop and our new shift knob, and then we can take this out for a drive. Let me show you guys the sloppiness that we're gonna get rid of in first and second gear by installing the shifter stop. So if we shift to first, look at how much movement there still is, even though we're in gear. Same thing in second, it's not as bad, but it's still there. It's super easy to install once you have the shifter trim removed. It's just these two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding in the reverse lockout that we need to remove. We're gonna carefully place the shifter stop into position and install our new five millimeter Allen head bolts. Now we're not gonna tighten these down just yet. I'm just gonna hand tighten them to the point where we still are able to adjust the shifter stop, but it is a little bit snug. So now what we're gonna do is put the car into first gear and then we're going to adjust the shifter stop so that it is pretty much on that lockout. We're gonna wiggle it a little bit to give you just a little bit of room. And then we're gonna go down to second, do the same thing, and then back to neutral. And now we're gonna check fifth and sixth. So we adjust the OEM lockout over here. So well, there's fifth, give it a little bit of wiggle, go down to sixth, same thing. And then back to neutral. And now we can tighten down those two Allen head bolts. Now you wanna make sure you can get into every gear. You may need to make adjustments to dial it in, but if everything's good, we can put everything back together. Let's see how much movement there is now that we've installed the shifter stop. We'll go into first, a whole lot less. Same thing in second. Now you can actually adjust the shifter stop so there's virtually no movement, but honestly, I wouldn't recommend it because those two metal pieces are always gonna be in contact with each other if you do do that. So I did leave a little bit of a gap to prevent that. Same thing for the OEM reverse lockout for fifth and sixth. I adjusted that so it cleaned things up and it's a whole lot less sloppy. And overall, the shifter feels much, much better. Installing our new shift knob is very straightforward, although it can take a little bit of time to get the adjustment right so the gate pattern is lined up how you want it. But we'll thread the locking nut on here first. and then thread on the adapter. We're gonna grab a 19 and 17 millimeter wrench and lock these two together. Don't forget to do this before you thread on the shift knob, otherwise you may need to fish out the adapter from your shift knob and that's not very fun. So now, We'll thread this on there and it's very likely that, like I said, the gate pattern is not gonna be clocked how you want it. Ours is a little bit too far to the right. So I'm gonna take this back off. Loosen the lock nut. That's the wrong way, Kevin. There we go. And I'm gonna make a slight adjustment to that adapter and then we'll tighten the lock nut and hopefully that should correct it. You may need to do this a few times, but it's really not that difficult. Ooh, just not far enough. We're close though. I think one more adjustment and we should be good. Counterclockwise, tighten that down. See how I did. Look at that. 
super easy to install and it looks a hell of a lot better than the stock shift knob. You can notice the difference right away. It feels completely different. The sloppiness is no longer there. The throws are much shorter, more precise. And with the weight of the new shift knob, it feels as though it just glides into gear. Although there's still that notchiness that I am a big fan of. This is one of those modifications that just improves the overall driving experience. And those are the types of modifications that I love because it doesn't have to be anything drastic or huge. Even if it was just the shifter stop or the, the shift knob, these small changes are things you'd be able to feel every time you get in and drive the car. And sometimes it's the small things that put a smile on your face. And I've got to say, Billetworks has delivered yet again. This is something that I would highly recommend to anybody who's looking to clean up and customize their shifter in their WRX. And there you go, guys. It's certainly a tedious install, not necessarily difficult but there's a lot of small steps that go into it. Realistically, this should take you around three to four hours, maybe a little bit longer if you're taking your time, but it's really not that hard and absolutely worth it. I do have to be honest though, when I first did a short throw shifter install on the 2015 WRX, which is basically the same process and I had to film it all, I dreaded making that video because there were so many steps and it was my first time doing it and it was a bit of a nightmare. But this time around, I can say that I actually enjoyed the whole process maybe because it was working on my own car but either way if you guys are wanting to pick up one of these for yourself whether it's the short throw shifter the shifter stop or the shift knob all the links are down in the description we've actually got some other billet works products that we're going to be installing on the wrx to make the shifter feel even better but i'm going to cover those in another video hopefully you guys are enjoying the content if you are Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.